healthy. Before we actually start the TEM session, I'd like to quickly introduce you the user machine interface on the Tech9 TEM. We will first look at the hardware part. You can see in the center, that's the TEM, and on both sides, that's the control panel. This is the left side control panel. These two sets of buttons, they control the alpha tilt and the beta tilt of the holder. When tilting the TEM holder, the alpha tilt tilts the holder like this. The beta tilt tilts the holder like this. The single tilt TEM holder can only perform alpha tilt. The double tilt holder, which we'll talk more in details later, can do both the alpha tilt and the beta tilt. This is the tracking ball. On this instrument, the tracking ball controls the beam shift. You see a minus and a plus sign here that controls the step size of the beam shift. When moving the tracking ball, you can see the beam is moving on the screen. It controls the beam shift. This is the intensity knob. It controls the condenser lens. It converges and diverges the beam. The fine and the coarse buttons, they control the step size of the intensity knob. When you turn the intensity knob, you can converge or diverge the beam. The exposure button and the stigmata button, we don't use them anymore. Now they're controlled by the software part of the user machine interface. Let's move to a group of buttons. On the left-hand side control panel, we have the multifunction X, L1, L2, and L3. On the right-hand side of the panel, we have multifunction Y, R1, R2, and R3. On different instruments, those buttons can control different things. On this TEM specifically, the multifunction X and the multifunction Y by default, they control the image shift in X direction and image shift in Y direction. When you activate other functions, they will control different things. For example, condenser astigmatism, objective astigmatism. L1 controls the screen lift. When hitting L1, the phosphor screen will be lifted. The camera is located underneath the screen so we can acquire images. L2 is alpha wobbler. It tilts the holder plus and minus 15 degrees to help you set the eccentric height. L3 and R3, they control the spot size. R1 is screen beam that reduces the beam intensity on the screen, and R2 resets the focus. Now, let's move on to the other buttons on the right side control panel. The dark field button allows you to take dark field images. The diffraction pattern allows you to change from the imaging mode to the diffraction mode. We'll talk about these two functions in details. The magnification button controls the projection lens of the scope, thus controls the magnification of your image. By turning the magnification knob, you can increase the magnification of the image. However, as you increase the mag, you can see the beam intensity decreases, so you can turn the beam intensity knob to illuminate the features better. This is the wobbler button. We'll talk more about its function when we discuss the beam alignment in the next video. This is the eccentric height focus. Each TEM has its own eccentric height. When the specimen is at eccentric height and when you do the alpha tilt, the specimen should tilt like this. However, if it's off the eccentric height, the specimen would rock like this. The best way or the proper way to focus the image is not to use the focus knob, it's actually to adjust the V height to match the specimen height to the eccentric height of the instrument. You only use the focus to do fine tuning. You can see there are two knobs. The first knob actually controls the focus, the second knob controls the step size of the focus. You can use the joystick to move the specimen. The plus and the minus buttons on top controls the step size or how fast you can move the specimen. By using the joystick, you can move the sample around. The joystick controls the XY position of the specimen. These two buttons, 
they control the Z position of the specimen. By controlling the Z height of the specimen, we can set the specimen into the eccentric height. We'll quickly talk about the software part of the user machine interface as well. In the work set, there are five tabs in total. Setup, Search, Camera, Tune, and Stem. In the Setup page, you can view the status of the TEM as well as the gun condition and extraction voltage. In the Search tab, you can locate the sample. You can also change the apertures and you can change the beam setting as well. In camera, it allows you to select which camera you like to use to acquire images. In this TEM, there's only one camera, so we don't have to worry too much about it. In the Tune tab, that's actually where you do all or most of the beam alignment. In the STEM tab, you switch the TEM mode into STEM mode. Now, you should be familiar with the machine user interface from both the hardware aspect as well as the software part. In our next video, we will move on to the beam alignment.